Hey everybody, we're back on the live daily videos. Uh, we shoot daily content every day, so we decided, hey, why not give a sneak peek of some of the videos coming up next week for anyone who wants to view them live as we film them. So our video today, Cassie and I are discussing uh, how you should not consider the sumo deadlift to just be wide conventional deadlifts. Most people already know this. However, a lot of people new to sumo deadlifting have very bad habits that they try to adapt to the sumo deadlift and they end up turning it into a wide stance conventional deadlift and that's not what we want to do at all. So very high level things that separate the conventional deadlift from the sumo deadlift is how much the quads are working, the position of the torso and the amount of hip mobility needed to successfully complete the lift. Cassie, show them what a very bad sumo deadlift looks like. See if you can break all of your good habits. Show them what a wide conventional deadlift looks like. There are many problems with the wide conventional deadlift. You will actually likely put more strain uh, on your lower back because of it. A lot of people, if they're new to sumo deadlifting too, they'll go with that very narrow hand grip. The problem with going narrower, yeah, you might reduce your range of motion slightly, but any amount of range of motion you've reduced is going to uh, force your upper back to flex. When that upper back flexes, it makes locking out weights much more challenging. You might be a little faster off the floor, but you still have to overcome that spinal rounding at the top. A lot of times people find that they can't extend their hips when their back's rounded because they have to overcome this position, and that is very, very challenging. So when we're talking sumo deadlifts, conventional deadlifts, there's not necessarily one body type that's going to be better for one versus another. There's a few factors that might determine which one you might be slightly more successful with. Uh, things like your injury history matter a lot. I, I am a believer, I don't know if Cassie is, but I would say that the movement that you can perform the most amount of quality work in is likely to be the strongest one over time. So even if your conventional deadlift is stronger, say it's 50 pounds stronger than your sumo deadlift right now, if you can do twice as much volume with your sumo deadlift, it will be stronger than your conventional deadlift over a period of time. Maybe not immediately, but over time, it will be. Whatever, what other uh, high level points do we have here, Cassie? Um, one thing that I tend to see with clients is that when they go wider, um, and they're not, uh, and, and they're new to sumo, is that they end up still doing the exact same mechanics as if they're doing a conventional deadlift. So, very posterior chain heavy. Um, whereas with sumo, we do want the, the hips should essentially be a little bit closer to the bar. And so, from the side, if I was just doing wide conventional, I would still be going into that hip hinge instead of allowing my hips to get closer to the bar and change that torso angle that a sumo or a sumo deadlift would do versus a conventional. We also find when individuals point their toes out, that's also not always required when going wider. In fact, if you can go with a more forward toe position, you are likely to get far more leg drive in the very beginning of the movement than you would otherwise. When people turn their toes out, they often do it because they don't have the proper hip mobility to widen their hips. So instead of actually widening their hip to get into position, they actually just externally rotate their femur, which creates a little bit more space for them to work with. So if you are somebody who has to point your toes out super wide to get into position, it's probably due to a mobility restriction that you have in your hips. Ideally, we would have the toes a little bit more forward to allow you to get a little bit more leg drive in the lift. We also find that when people go really, really wide with their toes and they really spread the floor, they end up rolling their feet to the outsides and that's going to produce a lot of hip torque. It's going to really dive into their hip external rotators, but they're not going to use their adductors as much as they could. They're probably going to end up dinging up their adductors, having more adductor strains when they're deadlifting and they're not going to use their quads as much. So Cassie mentioned this, that the uh, a lot of times people who are new to sumo are going to pull their sumo deadlifts like a conventional deadlift. It's a lot of posterior chain, hamstrings, lower back, uh, they also tend to be people who blow up their lower backs after deadlifting. And I have a very pro tip for you, your back should not hurt after deadlifting, really ever. Your back should be maybe sore, uh, but it shouldn't be any more sore than any other body part involved in the movement. So if your lower back is consistently blown up, uh, you're probably doing some things incorrectly. But uh, to kind of wrap up this video, 
primary points that separate sumo and conventional deadlifts from a muscular standpoint is going to be how much the quads are used to initiate the lift. The sumo deadlift is very much a push than a pull. You certainly are still pulling it and really it just depends on how you want to think about it, but the quads are much more active and you should be building tension in the quads in the beginning of the pull, whereas the conventional deadlift is much more dependent on hamstring tension and hamstring anchoring in order to initiate tension at the beginning of the pull. If you are somebody who has a lot of hip injuries and things like that and you get really tight sore hips from wide stance or, or squatting, you might want to stick with conventional deadlifts or pull from a reduced range of motion sumo deadlift. If you are somebody who has a lot of lower back injuries and you find that your lower back always gets blown up or is sore often or is a limiting factor for your training volume, then you should absolutely explore sumo deadlift and make up the amount of volume that you're missing in things like RDLs, uh, maybe hamstring uh, isolation work if absolutely necessary. That's not the first place to go. Um, but I think that's some of the higher level points that we have for that. Anything else you can think about there, Coach Cassie? Those are higher level things. Sumo versus conventional dev. Some things to chew on if you're new to switching to it. And I think with that, we'll sign out. Brandon Cassie out. I'm show an example. But we're still alive. Yeah, so I, I think. <laughs> example of what? Me going from conventional to sumo yeah, do it. from the side. Yeah. And then you can just go. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so then, I don't know if you want to talk during it and just say. Okay. No. <laughs> Coach me through yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, what do you want? Like, if someone was wanting to go into sumo, how would you go? I would say, like, put your feet wider, <laughs> <laughs> mobilize your hips, and you gotta want it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. How do I go sumo? <laughs> when you go sumo, uh, I would first look at how mobile your hips are. So let's widen your stance. And if you can get into a good position with your knee directly over your ankle, that's your spot. Knee over ankle with your toes almost pointed forward not not really you don't have to overdo it don't go so uh uh so overboard with that like that now nah, more out yeah about 45 degree less than Wait, 45 like, degree something right toes? in there yeah okay right in there yeah grab the bar build tension press the quads pull tall yeah easy stuff I think we'll turn it over to live stuff now. What, if you guys will hang out for another three or so minutes here, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Ron, do you want to convey the questions or do you want me to hold the phone? Um, I can take the phone out. Okay.